Good morning, afternoon, and evening, fellow corporeals. Time is of no importance here. Welcome to the sessions, a time of entertainment, a time of learning, a time of thrills. The time has come for us to put aside our creature comforts and embrace those feelings of great excitement and pleasure by passing through that base emotion, the emotion of fear. You can enter the sessions, but will you ever come back as yourself? Or will something sinister and menacing follow you out of these sessions? To keep the evil at bay, stalk the nerdporeal life form and slay that red subscribe button and the bell to follow and obsess over future videos, streams, and insightful commentary. Remember, it is the unknown, the unseen, and the unhinged that preys upon all of us in the darkness. But perhaps mankind will one day learn to supply its own light. Make yourselves comfortable, find a nice place to perch, and make sure you have a tasty beverage or perhaps some food, because what you are about to go through may change the very fabric of your reality. Make you question things that you would not normally question, and ponder if you ever will make it through the sessions, the serial horror sessions. The concept of identity has been studied heavily since the turn of the 20th century. When you think of identity, what do you generally think? Do you think personality? Do you think race, sex, orientation, roles, likes, dislikes, groups? Do you think of individualism or collectivism? There are many viewpoints on the concept of identity, and it can be tested greatly if you are in close proximity to people of various backgrounds and opinions. However, it can also bring about paranoia, a byproduct of our intelligence mixed with our fear of the unknown due to our genetic instruction to survive at all costs. The fear is real, and that can be exasperated if perhaps 12 people are in an isolated American scientific outpost in Antarctica and have encountered an extraterrestrial that can imitate and assimilate other life forms, or in other words, absorb you. You wouldn't be you anymore. The question is, would you know it if you weren't? And worst of all, how would you know if other people around you weren't already absorbed and replaced and are aiming for you to be the next newest duplicate? Is man truly the warmest place to hide? John Carpenter answers this question in his superior reimagining of the 1951 Howard Hawks original film, a more faithful adaptation of the original source material, simply known as The Thing, John Carpenter's The Thing. The setting for the thing is at the United States National Science Outpost 31 in Antarctica in the first week of winter in 1982. In the nearby desert, yes, Antarctica is a desert, we see a wolfish sled dog being pursued by a Norwegian helicopter. The Norwegians try to snipe the dog and throw grenades at it to no avail. The pursuit leads them to the American outpost with the dog running in and one of the Norwegians accidentally blowing up their helicopter by mistake. The Americans come outside to see what is going on, but there is a language barrier between them and the surviving Norwegian pursuer, so they do not know what his intentions are. He shoots at the dog and misses hitting one of the Americans in the leg, and he eventually gets gunned down by Gary, the commander of the base. We meet our players in the movie starting with R.J. McCready, played by the great Kurt Russell, who is the main helicopter pilot of the base. He takes station Dr. Copper to investigate the Norwegian base to find out what the hell happened and if they need any aid. As they depart, the dog that was pursued earlier is just roaming around the American base, unsupervised, and goes into the room of one of the personnel. McCready and Doc investigate the frozen ruins of the Norwegian base. Half of the base is burnt and what remains is frozen. 
They go inside to find the inside in complete shambles with a man frozen who has committed suicide and a giant ice block in the back room as a nod to the original Howard Hawks film. Doc gathers all materials including journals and videotapes to take back along with the carcass of an unknown organism. Doc and McCready come back to base immediately and have Blair, the chief biologist played by the unforgettable Quaker Oats and diabetes guy Wilford Brimley to do an autopsy on the organism. This organism looks like some malformed humanoid with two heads forcefully merging or split faced looking in extreme terror. They have no idea what to make of it but it does have a normal set of internal organs. The sled dog that was chased earlier is put into the kennel with the other dogs by the kennel master, Clark. The dog begins to change, triggering the other dogs to the attention of McCready and the rest of the Outpost 31 crew. It changes into something monstrous with its head blooming open like a flower, with tentacles and spire limbs coming out of its body. A thing of sorts, spraying something and infecting another dog in the process. McCready and the station commander Gary attempt to shoot it to no avail, only triggering another metamorphosis from the dog. Childs, played by Keith David, comes in with the flamethrower and burns the hell out of this thing, apparently killing it. What the hell was that? Who goes there? Besides the split-faced thing carcass, Blair now has double the autopsy work with this dog kennel thing creature to go over. Notice how the only personal protective equipment he is using is simply plastic gloves when doing the autopsy, something that would never fly today with all the precautions in play. Blair reveals that this thing can perfectly imitate other life forms and absorb them in close proximity. The Norwegian material and video reveals an excavation site with a giant spaceship in the ice over 100,000 years old. McCready and geologist Norris investigate the site, seeing the ship probably destroyed by the Norwegians perhaps, and a rectangular cut in the ice which must be the ice bed the creature was found in. They surmise that the thing can survive for extended periods of time frozen, only to be awakened by its prey. Blair continues to work out a hypothesis to the observations and the data from the autopsies of the kennel thing and the Norwegian split face thing from earlier. Blair questioned Clark earlier about why the dog wasn't in the kennel and when it first appeared. He was curious how long Clark was alone with it and surmises that the thing can infect others easily and take them over at the cellular level. If this thing ever reaches another continent, it will take over the human race in only three years. Blair has a breakdown and destroys the communications equipment and sabotages the helicopter to keep anyone from attempting to escape. He gets subdued and is placed in a tool shed outside for his own protection. Shortly before, the man who was shot in the leg earlier, Bennings, the meteorologist, was left alone with the not-so-dead kennel thing to be ensnared by its tentacles. Windows, the communications guy, sees this and gets help. Bennings flees outside, but the crew surrounds him and sets him afire with flares and oil, with a haunting scream reminiscent of Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Check out my review if you haven't seen it. After these incidents, McCready asks Copper if there is any test that can determine who amongst them is an imposter and who isn't. Copper proposes a blood test, taking each person's blood and mixing it with uncontaminated blood that is stored away. When they get to the blood bank, it is found unlocked and the contents spilt out, effectively sabotaged. This leads to further unrest and paranoia amongst the crew. The power goes out in Fuchs' lab, and he gets stalked by an imposter and goes outside after it, only to find shredded clothing with the name McCready on it. The crew find his remains and they surmise that he possibly set himself on fire to prevent becoming another thing. Can McCready be the thing? McCready notices that the lights in his cabin are turned on, when he knows for a fact he turned them off the day before, and goes up there with Nalls, the cook, to investigate. Nalls comes back and tells the crew McCready is the thing because of the shredded long johns from earlier, and they try to lock him out in the blizzard. McCready manages to get back in, but threatens to set off dynamite if they attempt to subdue him. Things start to go wrong right away when Norris is having what appears to be a heart attack and they get him to the infirmary. 
They sent Copper loose to defibrillate him, but Norris's chest opens like a giant mouth and bites Copper's arms off, killing him. Norris transforms into something grotesque with an identical head, while the real head is pulled off and metamorphosizes into a spider thing. Palmer the Mechanic says this familiar line. Gotta be fucking kidding. McCready manages to incinerate both before anyone can get hurt. He devises a blood test, takes everyone's blood, and applies extreme heat to it to see if a reaction will occur. We find out Palmer, who said that previous line, is the thing, and all havoc breaks loose as McCready's flame floor is malfunctioning. Palmer's head opens up and bites and picks up windows, throwing him around like a rag doll across the room. In a nod to the original film, the Palmer thing runs out of the wall and burns in the blizzard with McCready blowing up his remains. They burn in infected windows along with a bunch of board games. What a waste. No one else is infected, therefore McCready, Gary, and Nalls go to the tool shed to test Blair leaving Childs behind in case they don't come back. They find the door open with Blair gone and find a spacecraft underneath that Blair was apparently building. The thing attempted to rebuild something so it can escape apparently. McCready realizes that the thing wants to get encased in ice again so it can be rescued again, therefore they blow up the tool shed and the rest of the base, setting a fire. They go downstairs to the generator room to blow that up as well. Blair appears and kills Gary by merging his hands with his face and carries him off. Nalls goes towards Blair and vanishes, leaving McCready alone. The Blair thing attacks McCready and sabotages the explosives only for McCready to use his final stick of dynamite, blowing up the creature and the generator room alike. McCready takes shelter outside and Childs joins him having been lost in the blizzard with pursuing the Blair thing. Realizing their chance of staying alive is at an all-time low, they decide to wait and see what happens. That, my friends, is the 1982 version of The Thing. The movie grabs you right away by setting up the creature and the tension, and it gradually builds towards a great payoff throughout the movie. John Carpenter is one of the best when it comes to building tension, and Dean Cundy's use of lighting and cinematography make them a perfect matchup since Halloween. The writing was superb with the characters each given their own moments to shine and the paranoia that ensues with a group that big as one of them might not be who they say they are. The music by Ennio Morricone also stands out and is pretty Carpenter-esque, effectively adding to the increased tension and dread. The big standout in this film where a good portion of the budget went to was Rob Bettine's Creatures effects. What we saw looked truly horrific and almost real, combining tentacles and arachnid designs to create something truly alien and unsettling. This movie leaves a lot to the imagination when it first came out. On what exactly happened prior at the Norwegian base and how they came to start chasing the sled dog across the Antarctic desert, which was eventually answered in the 2011 film of the same name. There were also a lot of questions that arisen out of the movie, like... Who sabotaged the blood bank? When and how was Blair transformed? How exactly did Fuchs die? What happened to Nalls as he walked towards the generator? Do McCready and Childs get rescued or do they perish in the blizzard? My only gripe, and this might be an unpopular opinion, was that I felt the final fight between McCready and the Blair thing was underwhelming. McCready simply gets knocked aside, the Blair thing pops out of the ground to show itself, and McCready blows it up and that's it. I feel there could have been more to it with a chase and seeing McCready put up more of a fight with the creature for a few more minutes, increasing the payoff at the end. Other than that, the movie is up there with the greatest horror movies of all time, and I definitely recommend the original 1951 film as well, if you haven't seen it. But that one is more of a Frankenstein type of alien as opposed to what we see in this film. Like Body Snatchers, are you sure the people around you are themselves, or perhaps could they be imposters wanting to absorb you? Perhaps. But we can fight this, and this story must be told to all the people of the earth. One of the world's greatest battles was fought and won today by the human race. Here at the bottom of the earth, a handful of American and Norwegian men 
met the first invasion from a shape-shifting creature from another planet. The alien was destroyed, but not without casualties and the destruction of both American and Norwegian bases. Before I go into details, I bring you a warning. Every one of you listening to my voice, tell the world. Tell this to everybody wherever they are. Watch the skies. Everywhere. Keep looking. Keep watching the sky. Thank you for watching this first season of Serial Horror Sessions. Expect more down the line in next fall. Here is a look at what to expect all the way up to Q1 of 2022 and beyond. Next up is 40 Years of Donkey Kong, a personal tribute and retrospective and the reason video games is a medium this day for a late no November 2021 release. For the holidays, I will do a couple of Nerdporeal Christmas specials, covering the first two Home Alone movies with Macaulay Culkin, A Charlie Brown Christmas, and It's a Wonderful Life. Also in late December, I plan to do a layman's guide to The Expanse and a layman's guide to Cobra Kai prior to their new season releases as a non-spoilerific introduction to each series respectively. For Q1 of 2022 and beyond, I plan to do the following. Movie Reviews for 2001 A Space Odyssey, Dirty Harry, and Planet of the Apes. Television layman's guides will include Breaking Bad, The Orville, Better Call Saul, Video Game Retrospectives will include Super Mario RPG, a 3D Mario Retrospective Part 1, The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, and a 2D Metroid Retrospective. Stay tuned for all these in the upcoming months and look out for any announcements of live streams in the near future. Take care and let's start the holiday season with some good food and cheer.